Reform the church. Rebuild the community. Reclaim the culture. This is Doctrine to Dominion with Jacob Tanner. Welcome to Doctrine to Dominion. My name is Jacob Tanner, and this is episode 0.5, wherein I aim to introduce the show to you and encourage you to check it out. Now, of course, to do so, you probably want to know a little bit more about me and who I am and what this show is going to be about. So I am a pastor in central Pennsylvania. I pastor Christ Keystone Church in Middleburg, Pennsylvania, to be more specific. I am the husband of Kayla, the father of Josiah and Owen. I have published a couple of different books. I put three of them behind me here, one over here, here, and here. Hopefully, if you're watching the video, you can see them. One is Union with Christ, the Joy of the Christian's Assurance and the Doctrines of Grace. The second is Why Sally Can't Preach. And the third is The Tinker's Progress, The Life and Times of John Bunyan. More are to be published this year. And Not Pictured is a new devotion that I wrote really about the Christmas season, but you can read it any time of the year, called Dragon's Defeat, Love's Reward, Reflections on the Advent of Jesus and His Cosmic Victory. So I would encourage you, if you would like, to check any of those books out, or all of those books, if you are so inclined. I write for various ministries, and besides that, I also now principal a Christian school. So Lots of things that the Lord is doing in our lives, and that's actually part of where Doctrine to Dominion comes in. This show is, of course, part of Eschatology Matters, and I want to thank the brothers at Eschatology Matters for allowing me to be part of what they are doing. Now, of course, I know that there are plenty of podcasters, plenty of YouTubers, plenty of theologians that are putting out biblically faithful, solid content meant to edify the saints, meant to evangelize sinners and glorify God. And the last thing that I want to do is oversaturate the market, the internet, with more unneeded content. So the goal of Doctrine to Dominion is something that I have not seen really done the way that I would like to do this show. Doctrine to Dominion is, as the name implies, a show about teaching biblical doctrine in a down-to-earth, simple way, a practical way, that can then be applied to our day-to-day lives so that we fulfill both the dominion mandate of Genesis 1 and the Great Commission of Matthew chapter 28. And we'll focus on that in one of the first episodes. So with that in mind, I want to try to explain to you where the title of the show came from, what it means, and also what the tagline of the show means as well. So what is doctrine? Doctrine is really simply what we are taught in the Bible. It is a set of beliefs that we compile from the various teachings of Scripture. The problem, though, that I've noted frequently is that we live in an age where people say doctrine doesn't matter. I've even met with pastors in my own area who have told me that they don't teach theology. I'm not sure how one would preach and yet not teach theology, but it is something that people frequently shy away from, especially in a lot of our larger churches. And so we need to recognize doctrine does matter. It matters a great deal. Right doctrine unites the followers of Christ while separating all others from us. Right doctrine or true doctrine, as taught according to the scriptures, unites the sheep but separates the goats. And so doctrine covers a wide range of of things. Everything from knowledge about God, theology proper, to knowledge of man, which is anthropology, to knowledge of salvation, which is soteriology, to knowledge of the end, which is eschatology. It's all doctrine. 
And I aim to show you with this show that it all goes together. And so in a lot of ways, you could think of this show as aiming to establish a systematic theology in a practical way by which we can then live our lives. And that's where dominion comes in. I'm not really interested in the ivory tower sort of navel gazing that happens in so much of theology today. In fact, one of the things that has been an annoyance to me recently ha has been as post-millennialism has been on the rise, so many are aiming to say that post-millennialism is anti-academia that it is more fitting for your blue collar workers, but your sort of white collar or suit wearing theologians are anti post millennialism because it's, it's just not academic enough for them. I aim to show you that not only is it academic, but it is applicable to our lives. So I'm not going to aim to, to get into that tower so that you don't understand a thing of what I'm saying and it, there's no way to apply it. I don't aim to be of no earthly good. Rather, we do want to set our minds upon God. We want to contemplate the Lord, which I believe is our highest good. But we then want to apply that practically. Because if all you do is sit around all day reading books and studying, but you never apply it, you are hardly a productive member of God's kingdom and God's church. So we must apply doctrine to our lives in practical ways so that we can take dominion of the earth for the glory of God. So what is dominion? It's a word that scares a lot of people today. In fact, I was somewhat worried that by using the word dominion, there would be those who would not want to watch or listen to the show. So let me try to deal with those concerns. This is not some sort of prosperity gospel thing. This is not some sort of name it, claim it idea. This is not dominion of the seven kingdoms or whatever it's called. When I use the word dominion, I mean it in the same way that God uses it in Genesis chapter one. Dominion means to take control. To use it in a sentence, we as Christians aim to take dominion of the earth by proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming the lordship of Jesus Christ, and seeing all things brought under the control of Christ, according to his word. So doctrine to dominion exists to see the knowledge of the glory of the Lord cover this earth as the waters cover the seas. And we aim to see this accomplished primarily through the application of doctrine, through the teaching of God's word in practical ways. And so within this goal of taking doctrine and then utilizing it to take dominion, I have a tagline that goes along with the show, reform, rebuild, reclaim. Or you could summarize it in this way. This show's aim is to build biblical communities and to establish Christian culture. That is the fundamental task of what we aim to do in reformation, rebuilding, and reclamation. Now, to expand on this a little bit, I could put it in this way. I personally desire with this show, and by the way, with my church as well, I desire to see the church of Jesus Christ across the world reformed in its preaching and practice so that the word of God takes center stage in all that is said and done. I also desire to rebuild biblical communities. That is to say, I desire to, to see reshaped the communities of old wherein there was genuine Christian fellowship taking place on the regular, wherein there was genuine adherence to the word of God, wherein the laws of God actually legislate morality. And I know a lot of people will say, well, you can't legislate morality. Actually, that's just about the only thing you can legislate. And if we're going to do it as sinful men, the best way we can do it is by basing moral standards off of what has been revealed to us within the word 
of God. And then with this then, we also desire to reclaim the culture for Christ. Now, you may call this a mere Christendom, if you wish. You may call it a sort of mere Christianity, and I'll talk in future episodes about what exactly I mean by this. But the goal, in a straightforward way, is to see the satanic systems of this world defeated, destroyed, and torn down as Christ and his kingdom advance and march forth. I desire doctrine to dominion, to be like a battering ram held in the hand of our King, Jesus Christ, so that he might take us and use us to knock down the gates of hell. And for this to happen, we need to live according to God's word. We need to proclaim the gospel and we need to do this to beat down the gates of hell, to plunder Satan's domain and to spread his glory across this world. Now, I'm doing this show because I don't believe that this is a pipe dream. I believe that this is attainable. I believe that this is what we must strive for, whether it happens in my lifetime or not. This must be our goal. And so understand, yes, I am tackling this from a post-millennial perspective, from a Calvinistic perspective, from a Baptistic perspective, but I am going to aim to make it so that you don't need to be any of those things to benefit from the content of this show. In fact, if you're not even a Christian, I would still encourage you to listen to what I am going to be sharing because you may just find, by the grace of God, that it's true. So one of the biggest things that has made me believe this is all attainable is Isaiah 54. And I hope to discuss Isaiah 54 and the six promises there that are given to us that make us desire to see doctrine, to dominion, to see reformation, rebuilding, reclamation. I'll speak on that next time. But for now, what I want to do is point you to Isaiah 53, that famous chapter of the suffering servant, Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 6, it is prophesied, of Jesus, that surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the gospel in a nutshell. That is the way in which we are saved through faith in the suffering servant, in our King, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who went to a cross, was brutalized for our sins. And yet while he was there, exhausted the wrath of God against us was buried, but rose again on the third day, 40 days later, ascended into heaven to be seated at the Father's right hand, having this whole earth made a footstool beneath his feet. And when the fullness of time is once more appointed, when all things are made a footstool beneath the feet of Jesus Christ our King, then he will return to this earth in final glory. And he will resurrect those of us who have gone to be in that intermediate state, spiritually in the presence of Christ in heaven. He will resurrect us. Those who are still here will meet him as well in the air. And we will march forth across this earth. And finally, the fullness of his kingdom will come. But when he comes, he's going to come to an earth which has already been conquered for his glory. No, it won't be universally Christian, but by and large, I believe that the nations will effectively be Christianized, and those remaining enemies of Christ will be put down by the sword of his word. And so this Jesus Christ, now raised, now reigning, now ruling in heaven as our King of kings and Lord of lords, he is reigning over a kingdom that is ever widening, ever expanding, ever increasing. 
And so in Isaiah 53, verses 11 and 12, we read, Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and he makes intercession for the transgressors. I love that text because it tells us two things. First, Jesus's mission is a successful mission, wherein he saves the sinners that he intended to save. And as Revelation promises us, in heaven and on the new earth, there will be an innumerable number of saints who have been saved by Jesus. Secondly, this tells us that our king doesn't forget about us once we're saved. He doesn't send us on a suicide mission. He's with us. His Holy Spirit indwells us. He makes intercession on our behalf. And so we must find confidence in this truth. As Abraham Kuyper once stated, the situation has always been and will be until the end Christianity or paganism. The idols or the living God. There is no middle ground, friends. No fence to ride, no neutrality. Either Christ is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. Joshua once called upon the Israelites to name that day whom they would serve. Well, I can answer. For me and my household, for me and my family, we will serve the Lord Jesus Christ in all areas of life, even if it makes people hate us. And you, dear friends and dear saints, must now choose to do the same. This is Doctrine to Dominion, where we aim to reform the church, to rebuild biblical community, and to reclaim the culture for Christ. And I hope and pray that the Lord will be glorified through this, that you will join me on this journey and be edified by it, and that we may even just see souls saved through it. Amen. Seated here at my right hand, the Lord to my Lord did command, for of these ye that I will make a kingly footstool for your sake. Oh,